I'm sure that a few of you will remember the collet chuck that I bought last year for the milling machine. This end takes ER32 collets and on the other end there is a number 3 Morse taper which goes in the milling machine. Now since both the milling machine and the lathe have the same taper, I also used this on a few occasions in the lathe as a collet chuck. Collet chucks are great because they are generally low run out and have a large clamping area which is unlikely to damage the surface of the part that you are clamping. However, a setup like this, holding it in a Morse taper, does have its drawbacks. For one, you are limited in how long your workpiece can be. With this one, the longest piece you can chuck is only just slightly longer than the length of an ER32 collet for anything larger than about 8mm, and it's also not hugely rigid. When turning, even though it does have a drawbar, I can feel the taper wanting to pop itself loose. So what I thought I'd do is I'd go ahead and make my own collet chuck that mounts onto the spindle nose like all my other chucks do. Now to machine it, I'm going to use a piece of 80mm medium tensile steel which should be good enough for the job. So let's get started. With the facing done, I need to machine a recess that matches the mounting flange on the spindle. And according to the calipers, it's exactly 55mm in diameter. And that is a good fit on the spindle nose. It could be a little bit tighter, but I can't feel any movement in the two parts. I was going to sneak up on the final diameter, but I took one too many light cuts, but thankfully it worked out in the end. I'll then take it to the milling machine and I'll drill the four holes for the mounting studs.
With the studs in place, I can now ditch the four jaw chuck and I can machine the collet chuck with it directly mounted to the spindle. But before I can do any machining, I'll have to ditch the way cover and the control box housing because it was actually stopping the carriage from moving all the way forward. The next thing I need to do is remove a lot of material to form the collet nut mount. With the bulk of the metal gone, I can now cut the M40 by 1.5 thread that matches the collet nut. However, before I do that, I'll quickly take it to the milling machine and drill two holes for a set of Tommy bars, which is something that I should have done beforehand, but I forgot. With the threads now done, I'll drill and bore a hole through the collet chuck.
With that done, I'll swap out the cross slide to the old factory one. The old one still has the compound, which I need to cut the 8 degree taper for the collet. Now the 8 degree taper that I need really needs to be accurate, and the markings on the compound just won't do. So what I'll do is I'll swap in the old collet chuck and I'll sweep the taper with an indicator and I'll do this until there's no movement in the indicator. With the taper cut, I'll check the run out on a piece of ground steel. Now the first test showed about 50 microns of run out, which really is not that great. I'm looking for about 5 times less than this. However, given the surface finish that the boring bar left, this should be no surprise. I'm not going to get any better results with the boring bar, so what I'll do is I'll set up my tool post grinder. Now the tool post grinder is definitely a work in progress, but it should give us some better results. And that is a much better finish. And the runout has dropped to about 20 microns, which is a big improvement from before. Now I will give it another grind with a better grinding disc and some coolant, but before I do that, I'll give it a quick clean up to get rid of some of the machining marks. And the collet chuck came out looking great. Of course there are a few machining marks left, but if you make a tool that looks great, you'll never properly end up using it. And the final thing left to do is give it a final grind using a much better quality grinding wheel and some coolant. And that has dropped the run out to about 15 microns. Now 15 microns is pretty impressive for a machine like this, but I'm sure I could improve upon it. But before I do that, I like to buy a better set of collets first because I'm sure the collets are in part a reason for the run out that I'm getting. The collets that I'm using are just import quality, so I'm sure if I was to get better collets, I could reduce the run out by a little bit too. But until then, I'm very happy with what I have, and I'm very happy with how it came out. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.